Hi guys, it's Ben here. I'm not sat up in my usual upright position. I'm leaned back in my chair. I'm slouched. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. The transfer window has shut. Liverpool have completed all their business, both incoming and outgoing. I assume, obviously, the Barcelona Coutinho deal still is possible with the Spanish deadline being tomorrow. But as far as I'm concerned, that deal's off as well. The window has shut. Liverpool have brought in four players. Mohamed Salah, Andrew Robertson, Dominic Solanke and Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain are our four signings this summer. Naby Keita in for next year. Uh, I'm not my usual upbeat self. Um, it's not a absolutely disgraceful window, I suppose. I know that I, I tweeted that. Um, I, I was very annoyed around 6, 7 o'clock. Um, now I'm just sort of numb I guess to, to, to the whole window um, it, what I wanted to happen hasn't happened what I consider to be most important hasn't happened we haven't signed the centre back uh, we are still having to live with John Matip, Dayan Lovren, Ragnar Klavan and Joe Gomez as options we've lost Lucas Leiva too so we've got even less a centre back than we did have last year Sacco has joined Crystal Palace um, we're, we're a man right at the back there's no, there's no getting away from that uh, I mean to go from either Van Dyke or nobody is just astonishing to me. Uh, the fact we haven't even gone in to get someone as a stopgap as a better third choice surprises me. Um, I, I know Jurgen Klopp prides himself on here, only signed players that he thinks improves what we already have. Well, he signed Andrew Robertson and he isn't playing football at the moment. He's not getting in ahead of Alberto Moreno, so maybe is he even better than what we've got? Slanky, is he particularly better than what we've got? Uh, Salah is. That's, a, that's obviously the signing of the window. And Oxley Chamberlain, you know, I'd be surprised if he ended up in the first 11 often this season, especially in the league. Um, so it's a day of pure disappointment. Uh, we were told last night, my video last night, I said, Paul Joyce said that we were wanting to spend £175 million a day. We spent somewhere between 35 and 40 uh, in terms of gross spend. Net spend is less. Obviously, Sacco's gone for £26 million, So our net spend this summer is, again, very small compared to the likes of City and United, who looks like they're going to be competing for the title this year. Um, look, I know I tweeted, I think this has been a disgraceful window. Maybe I was being hit, maybe that was hit at the moment. Uh, you know, obviously, I wear my heart on my sleeve. Uh, as you can see, I'm very downbeat. I'm just very disappointed. Um, this was a real opportunity. So many players wanted to join. Van Dijk wanted to come. Thomas Lamar wanted to come. Apparently, you know, that apparently that's why he didn't go to Arsenal. Uh, there were various theories on that, but that does seem like a valid factor. Uh, Champions League football and what have you. Who knows how long we'll have Champions League football for? Uh, so for us to to not get any of those deals done, for us to not manage to break the bank for Van Dijk, uh, for us to not be able to bid for Van Dijk. Is disappointing. Um, do I still think we can compete this season? Absolutely. Um, we're going to score tons and tons of goals. Firmino, Mane and Salah. Look, it's all going to come down to injuries at the end of the day. If we have better luck with injuries than we did last season, obviously Alana's already got himself an injury, Klein's out. Uh, there are other players to come back in. Obviously Coutinho will come back in. I mean, you know, it can't be understated how important keeping hold of him is uh, if we're to really challenge for the league this season and in other competitions too. So at least we've kept hold of him uh, and at least we've got Oxo chamberlain as, a, as an option. Uh, Mohamed Salah, obviously a great signing. That one, you know, we, 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 we uh, came to terms with that one a while ago, but that's a great signing in isolation. But the window has just been so underwhelming. Uh, look, Naby Keita, great that we have him in for next season. I just can't help but feel we've let Van Dijk slip through our fingers and I don't know when an opportunity is going to come up to get a defender as good as him. A, a proven Premier League defender in the peak of his career, like Virgil van Dijk. Um, we, we didn't even bid for him. We never put a bid in at all during the whole window. We never managed to get to the bottom of it. We never managed to iron out those relation, relations with Southampton. Um, the ITKs assured us it, was, it, would, it would be okay. He, they were putting it as their profile picture. They were insisting it would be fine, they were saying it was a lot closer than, and, than we thought. Same as Lamar, um, Graham Kelly said it was a lot closer than we thought. There were rumours going around that there had been medicals taking place for both Van Dyke and Lamar, whether that's true I don't know, I mean it's astonishing if that is true, uh, and they still managed to not sign. Uh, look, I'm disappointed, I, it's, it's obviously it's, it's midnight on deadline day, 
we haven't signed anyone since Oxley Chamberlain today. Um, you know, I thought it would be I thought we'd be right among the biggest spenders of the day. I thought we'd be among the biggest spenders of the window when it was leaked earlier on in the summer that we were going to spend between 150 and 200 million. When it was leaked last night that we wanted to spend 175 million. When we've only spent 80 million or 90 million in the whole summer, gross. So net spend is obviously you know a lot less than that, especially with Sacco's departure going through. We haven't managed to offload Markovic. We haven't sold Moreno. We've sold Kevin Stewart. Um, so it's a real. It's a real damp squib of a window. It's a real disappointment. So I'm sure you can sense the disappointment in my tone, in my voice, in my demeanour, but I still feel like we can come in the top three. I still think that is very much on the cards. Arsenal have completely flopped in this window too. I think they're even more angry than us. They've only signed two players and they're, you know, they've, they've sold Oxlade Chamberlain to a rival. They've, they've let other players go, although they have kept Sanchez and Ozil, which you know, is, is fine. Um, we still haven't tied Emre Chan down to a deal. You know, we're, we're going to be facing a similar problem to Arsenal next summer if we don't buck our ideas up in that regard. Um, Chelsea aren't going to be particularly happy. I mean, as I as I record this, they still haven't completed the signing of Drinkwater. Um, I imagine they will. Uh, Ross Barkley turned them down. Oxford Chamberlain obviously turned them down. They didn't get Alexandro, so you know they're going to be hardly jumping for joy. Tottenham have done some okay business today. I think Lorente will be good for them. Aurier as well from PSG is obviously a great signing. Uh, they've done okay late on in the window Spurs eventually, so I think they'll be relatively happy, uh, although not maybe setting the world alight, but obviously the Wembley factor will be a struggle for them too. So I'm not too concerned about any of those three teams. I think Chelsea out of those perhaps our biggest threat, uh, but the Manchester clubs, um, I mean City aren't particularly happy today. They didn't manage to get Johnny Evans, they didn't manage to get Alexis Sanchez, but they still have spent you know, more than £200 million pound this summer. They should really win the league, as should Man United. Um, it's uh, it's between those two, really, as, as far as most people are concerned. And it's hard to argue with that. I do think we'll be the closest to those two teams because we're just going to score so many goals. Is our, is our defence going to prove us wrong? Is Dale Lovren going to have the season that we want him to have? Is Radnor Clavin going to be sufficient cover? Are we going to have the luck with injuries that we need? Are, is Henderson going to stay fit? Is Emery Chang going to stay fit? Is Alana going to stay fit? Um, everyone else has been struggling with injuries. Nathaniel Klein, uh, we're going to need Matip and Lovren to really form a partnership this season. We need those two to be really solid, stable, uh, and keep as many clean sheets as possible. We have kept a decent amount of clean sheets in our last sort of half a, half a dozen to ten league games. We're not absolutely shelling goals in, but you know we we saw what happened at Watford. We kept, we are capable of a collapse. We'll we'll analyse this properly um, in the week. Obviously, we've got an international break, so. Time to unwind, time to take our minds off football for a couple of days, watch the crappy international football. I'm not going to be bothering watching that, obviously, but uh, once that, once the dust has settled there, we'll, we'll regroup, we'll start to assess. We've got Manchester City the next weekend. I still feel like we can go there and get a result. Our attack is up there with the best in the league, if not the best in the league. I think Mane, Firmino, Salah um, is, a, is a, you know, obviously an outrageous front three. I'd say Chamberlain's going to be providing great uh, alternatives on the wing. Obviously, he's a midfielder too, so our midfield options are absolutely in abundance. It's not all doom and gloom. Um, as I said on, on Twitter, I, I said it was a disgraceful window. Maybe that was too harsh. I think it's a poor window. I think it's a 5 out of 10 window. I think we haven't addressed the issues. We haven't strengthened the positions we're weak in. We've strengthened the ones that we're strong in. Um, so... Let me know your thoughts, guys. Uh, some of you are going to be absolutely disgusted with what's happened today. Some of you are going to be really angry towards FSG and, you know, fair play to you if, if that's your stance, then fair enough. Uh, some of you are going to be a bit more optimistic. Um, some people on Twitter are saying, look, they'd have taken this a couple of days ago, catering for next year and not so Chamberlain in today. So, mixed opinions. I think mostly negative. I'm feeling down now, but I think I'll get over it in a couple of days. <laughs> I mean, I'm acting very dramatic about the whole thing now. Um, but look, we've got a great squad. We've got, we've got a good football team here. We're still going to compete. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Not sorry about my, my sort of downbeat nature. Um, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat and Facebook. It's Ben Mike saying all of those. I'll see you next time.